McLaren and Formula One. Ask anyone, and they'll know that they can be a force to be reckoned with. And over the years, they have given us the rising stars. Uh, uh, this is a serious problem moment potentially for Alain Prost. He's going to have to punch that boost button. Senna is getting close to him, and Senna is going to challenge for the lead. So Prost will have to go up the inside of Senna. Ayrton Senna has got the lead. And that was exactly as we predicted as a possible situation. The traffic definitely held out on top. Those same drivers being extraordinary. So we can get past. Right with him, right with him. Senna blocking away and sliding a lot. Senna knocking it down. He almost came to a dead stop there. Mansell weaving this way and that way, but Senna won't let him pass. He's got the racing line, he's going to keep it. This last lap coming up, of course, is going to be the crucial one. And just when they need it, pulling out all the stops and doing what looked to be a lost victory. It's handed the place back to Hamilton. He comes through and if I'm absolutely right, I'm sure that he is going to claim fifth place, which is all he needs to do to become yes. the 2008 Formula One world champion, Lewis Hamilton. And you will... But coming into 2015, they made a decision. With the Mercedes engines leaving their car, they tried to rekindle things with our old friends at Honda. And, well, the less said about those years, the better. But now, McLaren has a new heart in the shape of the Renault engines. While they don't seem to be the best at the moment, we know what they can do in the right hands. We believe it's for Fisichella, the current leader, and then Michael goes to the inside, tries to block the line in 130 oh, my word! and Alonso having none of it, straight around the outside, and now Raikkonen has got a chance to... With the launch of their latest warrior and fighter, the McLaren MCL33, this is surely make or break for McLaren. With Fernando Alonso staying on and a fresh driver going by the name of The Captain, can they bring McLaren back? Or will all the gremlins come back to haunt them? Hello everyone, Fire Chris Gaming here and welcome to F1 2018. It's finally go time. I know I've been on my break and I'm late covering this game, but to answer both questions, one, I wanted to get the balance on this game perfect so I didn't end up going to restart at 400,000 times, and two, I didn't, uh, two, while F1 has its uh, break, I had mine. I just got completely cooked, I didn't have the energy, and I didn't really feel like recording. So back to the game, we just got through the intro stage, meeting all the people, the agents, interviewer, and the engineer, which I've got to say I'm really liking this new layout, it's quite nice how there's so much more to this, it sounds like there's so much more in depth in the career mode now, and I quite like a new R&D system with a specific upgrades to each car, so some have major upgrades uh, from the get-go, so you have a big increase in performance if the car needs it. And honestly, it's a really nice touch. And the price progress himself, well, considering that they're mostly the ones from last year with the ERS management added on, I don't know how to think of it at this point. It's all right, but honestly, it's just the more boring part of the weekend. But, you know, gives you the resource points, got to be done. So with that all out of the way, it's time to get on to qualifying. Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. So we're qualifying underway, it was clear it was time to see what the McLaren could do. Just so you know, the difficulty here is on a hundred, because I said it's uh, still trying to find the balance. I think at the moment it's a pretty good balance because the, we actually had a pretty exciting race to go along with everything that happened and with qualifying itself, I think we also did a pretty good job and I think the balance is there. So coming up to the end of the well, one and only lap in Q1. Coming down, coming across the line, and where's it going to put us? It's going to put us in P4 for our first ever lap, a very good result when we're into Q2. And coming to the end of that lap, because there's not really much to see here. Round the final corner, and then banging out onto the straight, giving it everything with the ERS and the engine in full rich mix. 
and P5 at the end of Q2. And now at the end of our fastest lap in Q3, coming around the final two corners, we'll be hoping to get around where we were in Q1 and Q2, P4, P5 area. That'll be really nice as we come up down the pit straight, giving it everything that McLaren has got. And it's going to be P4 splitting the two Ferraris. That was a fantastic lap. But I don't think we're going to get much more of that, as we did try a lap later, but it just ended up being too slow after the cooldown, so... Good qualifying in P4, and it's time to get on to the Australian Grand Prix. So we're now on the grid for the Australian Grand Prix, the first race of F1 2018. Lights out, and away we go, and it is a alright start from the midfield. I can't quite tell at the moment, now we've got a good view. But we've got the Red Bull on our right, I believe, with Daniel Ricciardo storming up the inside, and on the inside of Sebastian Vettel. But those two are going to trip each other up, and they're going to hand me P4 on a plate here. As we run down towards Sun 2, Vettel having a look back down the inside possibly. He's actually just a nose ahead as we come round turn 2 and into turn 3. We hold the inside and we get back past the Ferrari. We're still in P4 as Raikkonen and Bottas up ahead still having quite a bit of a squabble. And we're actually not too far away from the squabbling fins. We're pretty close going down towards I believe turns 5 and 6. And we are it's very, pretty close so we could try and get a move done into turn seven or eight i'm losing count at this point but no we're gonna stick behind raikkonen i don't think either he's gonna be driving off into the distance or we're not gonna see him we're not gonna get another chance at, it, at all this race but onto the following lap pretty much in exactly the same place vettel is going to be looking racy behind us we all knew this from the beginning and here comes Sebastian vettel already up to the 11 12 chicane and he's got us clean this day ferrari straight past that car is so fast on this game it is ridiculous so we'll try and maybe get back past him as a lip stream but i'm not going to be suspecting anything and no we're not even close and vettel clearly going on the aggression right now he really wants to push and try and extend a gap in this grand prix we're going to try and stick on the back of him though because raikkonen didn't pull away from us massively so hopefully we can stick on the back of vettel and maybe even use him as a slingshot as hamilton in the fastest lap on a 125.8, and we are on a 127.4. We are very much off the pace right now, probably because we've had to deal with Sebastian. And now, on to lap four, we're going to see, and it's Valtteri Bottas, who is the first to chicken out. He's off into the pit lane. I did say that maybe someone would come in relatively early, and there you go, Valtteri Bottas is the first to chicken out, but that seems like a really early stop, because I don't think anyone else is coming into the pit so Bottas could get screwed by traffic here we'll see how his race pans out and we're still though on the back of the Ferraris as we still just try to chase them down into through turns four and five and moving on though to the end of lap or to, to the end of lap five is someone else going to chicken out it's going to be Vettel this time and Vettel off into the pit lane as well. So me and Raikkonen have a bit of clear track to ourselves now to try and uh, open the gap and try and just get the laps out. So we're on lap six now out of 29 and Fernando Alonso also coming in at the end of that lap. So luckily the pit lane is now completely free for us. And on the following lap, Hamilton is now the next car to pit as he comes in from the lead. So Raikkonen's now in first, we're in second. And in terms of net positions at the moment, I have no idea, because I have no idea where everyone else is. But Hamilton is not having a clean day on the exit, because here comes Sebastian Vettel on, warm, on warmed up super softs, and here goes Vettel, trying to have a look on the outside of Hamilton. They are running side by side, down towards turn two. Will Vettel be able to do anything about it? He's poking his nose in, he's not giving up on this fight. He's round the outside, he's got the better positioning than Hamilton, but this will turn into a better line for Hamilton through turn four, and he's got him! Or turn three, I still don't know. I'm not a Melbourne expert, I don't know the the, the number call. You know what I mean. <laughs> Coming on to lap nine though, as I speak gibberish, we are now going to make our pit stop. Uh, after a fairly long time on the ultra Zoss, but that does mean that we should be able to play a nice aggressive strategy through to the end going on to super soft tires now and then ultra softs for a later second stop and hopefully we should have a ton of pace so we can play around at the end and have a lot of fun and ricardo was someone else coming on this lap one of the Haas cars is in i can't quite see who it is 
and we just get out ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. But we need to look now to the exit of the pit lane. Is anyone else there? Well, there goes one car past to Force India. And here comes the other Red Bull of Max Verstappen. Down the inside. And he's actually almost gonna, just going to take the position for us. For, for a second. And we're going to have to try and get that back. Because we do not want to end up behind him. But instead, Ricardo is the one going on the attack. I'm not quite sure if I'm in the right... If the car's the right way around. But who cares? I'm completely lost. But we hold our position over one of the Red Bulls. And are going to go chasing after the other now. As we move on to the end of that lap. And it was Ricardo who was coming out. Uh, who just... Who, Got the overcut on us on the pits, but you made a tiny bit of contact there with the Red Bull being a little bit too aggressive. But it's fine because he's still got the good run out onto the pit straight. DRS using the ERS and that fuel going down the inside into turn one. We're going to try and make the move. And Ricardo locks up and hits Verstappen. Wow, these two are playing aggressive today. And so are we as we get back up into what I believe is about P5, P7. So a lot of cars... Still made to get their stops as we're now back on the back of Sergio Perez. We're going to want to make the move on him relatively soon. But we are getting very impatient behind the Force India. And we're going to dive it up the inside here in the second to last corner. And I wish I didn't do that. Because now that has just offered P8 now to Ricardo on a silver platter. Look at that. Not even at the start finish line. And he's already... Got past the Force India, and Verstappen's not going to take too long to go past as well. But Perez is actually trying to fight Ricardo, and he's actually still side by side. Surely, can he use the Force India's power to maybe try and think of an overtake here? He's going on the left hand side into turn two, and no, he slots in between the two Red Bulls in the sandwich, as Verstappen will surely get past him very soon. As the yellow flags are out, because there is our first retirement of the season. And it's poor old Kevin Magnussen after a torrid real life... What was it 2018 races happened? Yeah, it was. It was 2018. And he's holding up people. And the Haas. No one's going to want to see this if you're a Haas fan. But off it goes. It grinds to a halt. And this time it's not a pit stop error. It's a mechanical one already in the first race. That has got to spell trouble for the near future. But moving on to lap 17. A lot... Didn't happen, so we kind of just end up in a bit of a uh, line as such, just following everyone around. But Bottas is nowhere to be seen after his earlier stop, so surely the traffic's made us a problem. As Verstappen trying to give us some problems, but we are not having any of it as we hold on to P3 for the time being, which I believe, uh, well, regarding uh, not regarding our pit stops, is actually a legitimate position. And right now, though, we've got trouble as Vettel behind us on a 125.8, I believe that was, on an absolute flyer right now as he's going to be storming up behind us any time soon and on lap 19 we've got Verstappen he's getting very close in the another DRS zone and Vettel right behind him Verstappen tries to the inside line we hold it around the outside now but Vettel will surely be moving into position to try and get that move done so now the main DRS zone is coming up very soon we're going to want to get a good exit as we can decent through the second to last corner and that final corner it's all right it looks a bit wide though it was on the curve and almost on the grass and Verstappen is surely going to want to try and make a move here as he goes round the outside. And will he make it this time? No, not quite. As he now gets in the way of the Ferrari, which gives us a second of breathing space. But it's not, it's going to be too much longer before Vettel probably overtakes Verstappen as we switch the cameras. And Vettel, learning from his earlier fight with, with Hamilton, earlier fight with us, gets the better line this time, forces the Red Bull off, and surely he'll have that move done for P4 in this race right now, but not quite, and no, he does just sneak ahead of the Red Bull, I believe, on lap 20 out of 29, so not too much longer to go. So on lap 21 of 29, Vettel now turns his sights to us, and he wants us as quickly as possible and out of the way, so he can maybe even go chasing Kimi Raikkonen for P2 in this race. As Vettel, looking around the outside, you can see already he's getting very racy and wants to get around us as quickly as possible, going this way and that way, trying to overtake. But it's no use this time. We hold our ground over Vettel, but he's still hitting very racy. Down into turns five and six, and that looks like contact! That looks like a tiny bit of contact there, and it's going on. It's really starting to kick off now. It is part of Australia, and there's a virtual safety car. You can just see by the flashing boards over there, there was a virtual safety car deployed. So you know what I'm thinking? It's time for the final pit stop. It's on lap 21. We come into the pits and we make our final stop back onto another set of Ultrasofts. 
But I'm not sure if that was the best. If our strategy was the best idea, I think it would have been better if we just did a one stop. But we have to live with what we've done, and that means that we are currently down to be seven behind Carlos Sainz. It's painful when a podium was probably ours if we'd just done a one stop. But we have to live with what we've done, and there goes Brendan Hartley through to P8. Random pause. No idea why. And that was that was a horrible thing to have happen. But we have to live with it and move on. And we were not too far behind Brendan. So short, shortly afterwards, trying to get the overtake done on the Toro Rosso. Down the pit straight, not quite getting enough speed to set ourselves up for a move in turn two. As we try to chase the Toro Rosso now. And surely we'll just head to the outside here and easily get around him. He's on the softs. We're on fresh ultras. And yep, straight around the outside. And we've got him. So maybe... We can try and chase after Carlos Sainz, but I'm not expecting much. And surely that might just be the end of things in this race. Lap 23 or 29. And they, there's the gap to Carlos Sainz. What, 15.3 seconds. So it's not looking good. But it is looking very good for this man, Lewis Hamilton. He has been in the lead of this race at the slight scare for, Lewis, for Vettel earlier in the pit stops. And it looks alright, it's still just going pretty normally through here, but that's slow, that's off the racing line, and that is Lewis Hamilton out of the Australian Grand Prix. Unbelievable, Raikkonen inherits the lead, Vettel second, one of the Red Bulls third, I'm not quite sure who it is, and we're going to go to P6, there is Hamilton's car on the side of the road, and that was that. We ended up in P6, so a good job. It was so much more alpha, but hey, what can you do? That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. So, Ash, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, I'd, I'd say it's just raw pace, plain and simple. I mean, we could sit here and talk about strategy all day. The overtaking, looking after the tyres. But at the end of it all, if you want to win, you need a package that's got the speed over everyone else. And that's exactly what they had today. See, a real shame in the end. I reckon if we did run the one stop, we probably could have been right up here with these guys. We could have been on the podium. But you have to feel sorry for Lewis Hamilton because that was such an unfair finish to his race. Leading for 27 out of the 29 laps. And the engine goes. You have to feel sorry. But also, if you'll notice, there's no sign of Valtteri Bottas. And we're going to have a look what happened earlier in the race. This is what happened. He actually tagged the Toro Rosso. I'm not sure who it was. Maybe it was probably Pierre Gasly, I'm going to say. And he was down to 100% last place at the end of his pit stop. And he immediately went on the attack of the Williams and got, pa ba uh, got past him. But after that, he just ended up in traffic of the faster cars around him. He just couldn't overtake them. Yeah, it was an alright performance in the end, I think. We could have done a lot more, as I said, but hey oh. You scraped the walls a few times. Were you struggling for grip? Now I didn't realise that I should have just ignored this because that actually decreases the morale of the department, so you actually pay more for the parts and the parts are more likely to fail. So uh for that one, maybe just say no comment. But other than that, thank you ever so much for watching this first part of F1 2018 career mode. I'll be sure to read more episodes as fast as I possibly can. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care, guys. And goodbye.